Chapter 8, Estimating Single Population Parameters. In this video, we'll learn how to determine the required sample size for estimating a single population mean. Recall that we learned about the three conflicting objectives when we're developing a confidence interval estimate. So as a refresher, for a given sample size, a high confidence level will generate a larger margin of error. And for a particular confidence level, a small sample size will result in an increased margin of error. So if we want to reduce the margin of error, we're either going to have to reduce our confidence level, increase the sample size, or both. So in order to determine the required sample size for when the population standard deviation is known, here we see we already know our margin of error is denoted by the letter E. And in order to find it, we take Z times our standard error. We learned that in the previous video. Here, to determine the required or minimum sample size needed to develop a good confidence interval estimate, we're going to use this formula right here. So our Z value, again, will depend on the confidence level we want. And so here's our uh, commonly used confidence levels table. Our population standard deviation is known, so we're going to plug that here into our formula. And we have our margin of error, or the letter E. And each of these numbers are squared. So we'll take Z squared times our population standard deviation squared divided by our margin of error squared. So here's an example. Say the emergency medical response unit in Oceanside is interested in estimating the mean time to respond to an emergency call. The times are assumed to be normally distributed with a known standard deviation of two and a half minutes. If the agency wishes to develop a 95% confidence interval estimate for the population mean with a plus or minus 0 0.50 margin of error, what sample size is needed? So we want to make sure we identify all of our variables. Our Z value at 95% or 0.95 is 1.96. Our standard deviation is given to us at two and a half minutes. And the desired margin of error is 0 0.50. So plugging in all of our numbers, we will square the 1.96 and 2.5, multiply these two together, and then divide by 0.5 squared. That will give us 96.04. But notice I'm rounding up to the next whole number. When working with the required sample size, we will always round up to the next whole number, even if our decimal is very low. And that's why I use this example, because you can see here our decimal is, is 0 0.04. One way to think about it is because if your required sample size is shy of the minimum requirement, you wouldn't be able to use our sample data to develop a good confidence interval estimate. It's like the minimum drinking age. You can't drink if you're 20 years old and 11 months. You can only drink if you're 21 or older. So always round up. You have to include this 0 0.04 because if you round down to 96, that means you're shy 0 0.04 uh, of data. That's why we round up so that we will include our uh, decimal value in there. Let's look at another example now. What happens if we don't know the population standard deviation? So note here it says unknown. The American Dairy Institute wishes to develop a 90% confidence interval estimate for the mean number of gallons of milk consumed per year by a family of four in the United States. They wish for their estimate to be within plus or minus 3.5 gallons. The population standard deviation is unknown, so a pilot sample of n equals 50 families is selected and the sample standard deviation is found to be 62 and a half gallons. Doing pilots are very common in business and in research where we'll sample a small group first to test and see how things go before we do our full study. So here again, we want to make sure we find all our variables. Our Z value at 90% confidence level is 1.645. 
Because I don't know my population standard deviation, I'm going to use my sample standard deviation instead. And our story gave it to us at 62.5 gallons. And the desired margin of error is plus or minus three and a half gallons. So we'll go ahead and plug in all of our variables into the formula. We will take 1.645 squared times 62.5 squared divided by 3.5 squared. And we'll get 862.89 and we'll always round up because we want to make sure we have our minimum required sample size at 863. Now notice though, because we already have a pilot sample of 50 families, we can apply this toward our minimum requirement of 863. Because in business, we want to be efficient. So if I were to survey 863 families on top of the 50 families in our pilot, I would have then surveyed more than our required sample size. I would have sampled a total of 913, which would be a waste of time and resources or money. So instead, what we want to do is we will subtract the pilot of 50 from our required sample size of 863. And that means we need to survey another 813 families to meet the total required sample size of 863. Let's practice using problem 29 from the textbook. A manager wishes to estimate a population mean using a 95% confidence interval estimate that has a margin of error of plus or minus 44. If the population standard deviation is 680, what is the required sample size? So first we want to make sure we identify our margin of error. That's our 44. Then we need to find our population standard deviation. There's our 680. And then to find our critical value, we first have to make sure we know what our confidence level is. That's 95%. So now you'll go to our useful table, and at 95%, our z-value is 1.96, and then we'll plug in our variables into the formula. So we'll take 1.96 squared times 680 squared and divide by 44 squared. So you'll get 917.54, and as always, we have to round up to the next whole number in order to get our required sample size. So if you have questions, just let me know.